Okay, I was on my uh, was on my second pin here, and these ones here were giving me uh, some, some problems. So what I did is I went ahead and refloat them, and then I'll go ahead and resuck them out. Uh, let's see, where are you guys? There you are. And let it sit on there for a little bit and suck them. And sometimes that does it. Let's see, where are you? There you guys are. Sorry about the focus there. Let me try to refocus. Here we go. Alright. Well, looks like that might be it. Let's see if there's any on this side. Again, be careful with your uh, your pins. You don't want to uh, strip your holes out. You can go like this too with your tool to kind of break any uh, more minor solder bonds that are in there and they all seem to be uh, pretty good looks like this one might be a little tough yeah I'm gonna go after that one again okay I got my uh, second one up check the uh, pins make sure there's no uh, barrels connected to them that's the tubes that go through the board we call them barrels or eyelets or feed throughs there's whole bunch of different technical names for them. But, uh, anyways, that one looks good. It was kind of stuck in there because some of this rust right here was holding on to the pin on the other side. So I'll have to pay uh, particular attention to this uh, board when I put it back together and check it. Let's see if I can't focus on it. There we go. So this stuff was kind of nasty. I'll definitely have to do some cleaning on that before I put it back together. I'm sure there was nice little current flow running between these pads here and possibly this one over here with this uh, powder corrosion. So hopefully we'll get this all together and uh, everything will work fine on it for uh, a friend of mine. Uh, I can't remember his YouTube channel right now, but we're friends and he does some old stuff like this Ataris and games and old computer stuff and I do a little bit of mismatch of everything and so it happens we work uh, some we, we don't work for the same company but we work in the uh, same building so sometimes when he gets things like this he'll bring them to me I'll repair them he'll do his little video on it and post it online so, anyways y'all have fun uh, when I remember his name I'll I'll put it up there it's it's something I forgot, but I'll let you know. Okay, here's my friend's uh, YouTube channel. He's got all kinds of nice little things on there. So go visit his YouTube channel and see some things in there that you might be interested in. Hey, I uh, got the other one out. So now I'm on to the third one here. Oops, it's a little hard to do it with the camera <laughs> when you're looking at the camera. Yeah, that's just pretty much how it goes right there. Uh, this one I'm going to leave. I'm going to put a big ball of solder on it and sit on it for a while. I love these uh, solder suckers, they are pretty good. When they get plugged up though and they're not working right, oh my goodness, they are a real pain in the butt. So it's a good idea to keep them clean and uh, including the tube that actually touches the, uh, or the tip that touches the, uh, the actual pads themselves. And I find that this board, whoever made it, uh, 
did a very good job on it. It's a very robust board. Holds up well to the heat. And the pads are pretty good. Of course, when you do this, you don't want to be pressing uh, on the pad. You just want to let the tool just kind of sit on it and wiggle it back and forth. The reason for that is is because when the uh, pads get heated up, uh, the gluing or the epoxy or whatever they use to hold it down, uh, it likes to let loose a little bit. And if you're pressing on the pad and going back and forth, uh, the pad will actually rip off. And then you'll have to drop an eyelet in it. That's a it's a tube with a little flare on top and you drop it in there and then on the other side you'll actually use another uh, tapered tool looks like a drill bit without the, the little uh, side cuts in it and use that to uh, to uh, squish it down in there and flare it out and then you use a flat punch to uh, flatten it out This one looks like it probably didn't release. So let's go back at it. All right, now the one that I left uh, right here, what I'll do is I'll actually put this in sideways and heat up the pad and I'll put a ball of solder on the other side and then I'll heat this sucker up really good and then go at it. So let me get that done. Okay, I got my big ball of solder on there now. It definitely is not wanting to heat up. There it goes. So now I'll set this on here. I'll just let this cook a little bit. And when it feels like it's free, then I'll go ahead and suck it out with the solder sucker. And it looks like it might be free now. I'll kind of lean it side to side a little bit. And then pull it out. Let's see if. I Let's see if it came out. Come on, focus for me. And it doesn't look like it did it, so I'll have to reflow it and do it again. Here, yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of a flux on here. And there was a, one of the pins down here, it didn't look like it flowed very well either. Let's see if I can find it. Man, that's a, there you go, this one right here. And then let's look at these other ones. Yeah, they all look pretty good except for those uh, those two, that one, and this one's got four pins there. Ah. Like this one may not have done it either. Get my pick and do a quick inspection on it. See if it okay, yeah it did. See how they just spring back? This one not so much, but it does this way. So you can tell it's loose. That one seems a little tight. Sometimes you can work them back and forth and they'll break free. That one's free, that one's free. That one's not. Actually that one was. This one. Yeah, actually that one was too. Okay. So you can just normally just push on them and tell if they're free or not. Obviously this one's not. So let me refill that one and suck it out. Okay, I got them. Uh, two of the pins uh, were giving me a little bit of a problem. It was this one, so I went ahead and just dropped a bunch of solder on it. And you can typically just touch them and tell if they're free or not. And so I've pretty much done all of them here. And sometimes if there's just a little tiny bridge, it'll snap when you do that and it'll break free. That's how you do it. All right, so let me get the big solder sucker and set it on there. Here we go. There we are. Now I'm just gonna let it cook for a little bit. There we go. Now let's see if that Yeah, maybe not. Might just have to do that the alternate way. I mean, there's a couple of methods. You can go around the other side since you're not keeping the, the dip socket and just cut it off and then go back at it with the uh, solder sucker. Uh, you can put a ball of solder on here with the soldering iron and then use a pick and pull up on the other side when it gets liquid or uh, fluidy. <laughs> Terrible terms today. 
All right, so let me get on to that. Okay, all the pins are free except for that uh, one in the corner. Uh, right here. So you can like cut this right across here and then cut that and then go through and get all the plastic away because the plastic acts as a heat sink. And then you can uh, heat the pad and put a pair of uh, like forceps on this side and just pull it out. Or you can just try to get your soldering iron and try to heat it and push it out let's see is this it yeah that's oh sorry you can heat this up with your iron sometimes you may want to raise the heat a little bit I don't like to do it because it's bad for the boards but you can put your iron on there like that and then go over on this side and put your pick behind it and pull it off so I need two hands for that so gotta go for now and that worked I was able to heat it up with the iron and uh, gently pull it off and it came off without destroying the board so well let me get on to the other ones 